Hi, it's random dumpster teardown time and look what I found! A classic bit of obsolete technology. Hands up, anyone who still uses a fax machine. This is a brother, they were the duck's guts of faxes back in the day. Name a better fax machine back in the day. Um, this is the 8360p, 33600 bits per second. Thank you very much, screaming along, and it is just a fax machine. It's not one of these newfangled uh, things, although it is a high-speed laser fax, so that's pretty uh, uh, relatively newfangled. Fax machines, uh, nobody, like, they've gone the way of the dodo. Does anyone still use them? Like, I would have killed for a machine like this, like 25, uh, 30 years ago, because I had, before the internet, before the World Wide Web, I actually used a fax machine, the polling feature, as my website. I could store up to, I think, four pages in my brother fax machine, so I could store them in memory, and then people would dial, I, I had two phone lines, people could actually dial my fax machine and actually poll my um, you know, latest product price list and everything from the fax machine. And you know, at some points the, the thing was like ringing all day. It's got a little bit of paper left, but yeah, it doesn't do anything else. And yes, we do have the uh, comically long screwdriver for this thing. And this would have been probably, I don't know, was there a better, better fax machine than, uh, uh, it's full of dust. Oh geez, okay, not good, but anyway. Let's start taking it apart. Yeah, as I said, these things were the duck's guts and the staple of any office back in the day. I'm talking the 80s and the early 90s. Uh, they didn't survive too much into the, uh, the end of the 90s because pretty much, you know, um, email was uh, starting to take over by that point. I don't know. Hands up, leave it in the comments. When do you think Fax machines are officially died. Anyway, uh, what are, yeah, we've got line, uh, extension, and phone, and that's it. All right, I'm not seeing any other screws. Um, this is rather annoying. I have to flip it up. What do we got? Uh, uh, eh? There's some sneaky buggers behind the paper tray. Maybe that'll start something. But I reckon there's probably some snap-off panels or something like that on the sides, maybe. And down in here, yep. So, of course, this is going to be pretty much a standard uh, laser printer. But anyway, we'll see what she's like. The vintage of this thing, I don't, I don't know. I haven't looked it up, but uh, you know, it's a more modern one as far as fax machines go anyway. Would that be used in... Anything else? A TN6600? Um, yeah, it's got the drum in there and looks like a genuine. That looks like an unpopulated USB. And a, um, is that a Centronics? Oh, interesting, because this thing wasn't, like, isn't supposed to be a printer, I don't think. It's just designed to be a fax machine, so yeah, the laser in this thing, it, you know, it wouldn't even need to be 300 dpi, would it? Well, nope, I was wrong about that. Uh, apparently, like, it's a copier as well, up to 14 pages per minute, and actually 600 by 300 resolution. So, yeah, not too shabby, but, like, I don't think it actually worked as a printer. Doesn't uh, seem to have had, but you could actually use it as a uh, copy functions. So I guess it was uh, when machines were like crossing over and they had to find more uses to keep the fax machine going. It became like an office hub. The office fax machine could also be used as the office copier. But I can't remember ever using a fax machine as a copier, really. Although if I did, I can, like, you know, when you're sending fax jokes, who can remember, um, you know, you would send, get a fax joke instead, you know, before email, like a supplier would send you, like, and would fax you, like an electronics uh, joke, and then you'd copy it, and you'd pass copied in low resolution on the, um, the fax machine, then you'd pass it around, and, you know, this is before uh, email was a, was a thing. There we go, we have a battery backup, Vada Jobby. I think that's uh, gone the way of the dodo by the looks of it. Three cells in there. I do actually rather enjoy using the long screwdriver, I've got to admit. It's quite fun, you know, and also you keep your distance, you know, just in case the thing's going to attack you. Well, there's a lot of shielding around here, but there you go. Looks pretty beefy, and it's got some memory uh, expansion there. 
All right, let's try and get the rest of power. Hey, there we go. <laughs> There's our modem in a face for all you uh, modem aficionados who were hanging out. I guess you don't have to watch the end of this video. That's all you're here for, right? I know it. Oh, looks like they can't got a couple of uh, neon bulbs there as uh, protection. <laughs> Vertical resistor there and a single sided board. You've got to keep that cost down, of course. And a big earth wire. Oh, that's just like, come, no? Is, is that an earth wire or is that to pull something out? I don't know. Um, it's just flapping around in the breeze. Yeah, well, we've got a uh, DIN. Is that for like an external uh, keyboard? Can only presume. Um, and that's buggering off to some processor board somewhere, but that's the only thing on it. They went to a fair bit of effort there. Now, I can't help but notice small things like this. Look, there's a cutout there which seems to have no other purpose but to let me get access to that screw. Um, I just like that. that. It's just little things like that I always notice. Nice. And likewise again, there's a little cut out there that the only reason for it is to get my screwdriver in there. Alright, so I am seeing some plastic clips here, so maybe... Uh, I don't know if the top comes off first or these will pop off. I no idea. I'm not treating this kindly. That's for sure. There we go. Woo! Oh, the dust. <laughs> And there we go. I got that slid that cover plate off once I got all the uh, connections off. There's our uh, earth wire connecting that over. So there's that board on the back that, uh, you know, that has that uh, Centronics uh, printer connector on it and um, made in Japan. All the best stuff's made in Japan, but yeah, that's obviously not the main, I don't think that's the main processor for this thing because um, once I said, as I said, it's got that memory uh, slot there, but is that the main processor for this thing? Perhaps it is, I don't know, but uh, yeah, that's, I don't know what that is, custom brother, jobby, or something like that. And again, for the line interface aficionados, there's our mains power supply there, that looks alright. Got a ceramic fuse jobby, and uh, a single sided, of course, um, there you go. Those look like Nikon Chemicon jobbies, so yeah, decent power supply. It's got some little carbon trimmers on there. Made in China though. Whoa. Then if we get that uh, Mylar high voltage uh, isolation sheet off, uh, we've got two separate boards here. Are they joined? Yes, they are indeed. Um, so not sure what that one's doing. Bunch of uh, sensing um, drive for the laser mechanism, but the board up here for the laser perhaps. Uh, let's get those boards out. Looks like we've got our high voltage board there for the uh, corona wires. Oh, and there really is nothing on the other side of that board. So yeah, that's just uh, doing a whole bunch of just sensor interface and stuff like that for, you know, there's a lot of uh, uh, like roller sensors and paper sensors and, you know, jam sensors and all sorts of things inside a uh, printer like this. Yeah, well, I should have cleaned this before I uh, took it apart, making a bit of a mess here. And this front panel's all held up. <laughs> it's just coming to guts it completely. Ugh, come on, there we go, there we go, there we go. Front panel's off. Yeah, well, we've got a board on there. Now that's interesting, isn't it? They've got a membrane uh, board here with the integrated um, switches on them. That's that's really interesting, is it not? Um, usually you don't see that. Usually you get like a separate rubber mat for the keys, which oh, which can often come down onto a membrane keypad, but these are actually integrated. So that's pretty groovy. Oh, I like that. Jeez, you know, they've got a lot of effort. And that PCB there drives both the, uh, that chip drives both the uh, keypad and the LCD by the looks of it. And you can see that's a, that's a chip on board jobby right there and I, I won't be gentle there you go um you can see that's a that's a chip on board there and uh yeah they've just got like a little small little micro there not sure what it is not that fast oh all right i looked it's some sort of um nec uh processor so and we've got a whole bunch of uh molded injection molded um this one's a, a double is that a double shot or has that got an inset in there but uh yeah there are all the keys on the front panel and a couple of screws on here and we get the upper um scanner uh, roller part of it so looks like there's our there's our scanning head across there and well there's only one no, there's only a couple of wires in there there you have it there you go 
Nice uh, Mitsumi motor there. Yeah, you'd uh, scrap that, of course. You know, if you're scrapping parts from something like this, you know, motors are thing. You know, motors are one thing you'd keep. Gears and stuff like that. Little, uh, you know, optical sensors and things like that. Um, maybe the PCBs to scrap some parts, but you know, it's not much you can do with any of the other stuff. And what are you going to use the, uh, you know, the scanner head for? Yeah. Now this is interesting. The scanner head this module in here and I noticed a little drop down latch there so if you push it push it like that it drops out isn't that neat there you go so there's the there's the sensor head that just it comes out nicely and it's got an illumination uh, array in there and um then the actual linear um scan head itself so oh we could have a look at that under the uh microscope but you know not that interesting i still have no idea of the optimum way to get into this thing but um it doesn't really matter because i'm not i'm not trying hard we just want to see but i don't think there's going to be much left in here there's going to be the actual print head itself the laser print head and you know, side flap there so there's going to be a procedure to get this apart but unless you've got the service manual or you do this well, you take your time and figure it all out and well this is just a quick tear down so yeah bugger it whoa look at that there you go oh i've got a speaker there oh yeah because you've got to hear the uh, dial tone of course i <laughs> forgot all about that still got no idea how this outer plastic bit all comes off it's got like it's just nuts there's clips everywhere and i like i expected it in more pieces and more uh panels to sort of like take off and stuff like that I expected sort of size to come off but wow they've really really gone to town on this unbelievable wow this is actually this top covers one piece like un, like unbelievable i just have to rip that apart because that is like one complete shell which goes over the top and bug it if I can find where like any screws that hold that like it should just like it should just lift off but it must have lifted off like that but it had so many clips that it was just way too annoying to actually do it anyway it doesn't matter this is always a destructive tear down gotta be careful my ESD gun's still here still waiting for my stupid um digital pot and there you go that's what you'll find in any old school uh laser printer so yeah we've got the laser head here which will have a spinny mirror in the laser and a spinny mirror and it scans across uh like that and so we can take that apart look at the optics um one of the wires that goes yeah that's probably one of the wires that goes to the uh fuser which is just a big uh, heating element, uh, basically. So, you know, a big part of the power supply goes into uh, heating that up. So, and it uh, fuses the toner onto the paper. That's why it all comes out warm and it smells that, has that lo lovely laser printer smell. Got ourselves a fan I don't know the brand of, made in China. Eh, whatever. And that's the other end of our fuser, I believe. And that goes off to the connector. We've got a solenoid down there which i don't know that engages some sort of uh, paper mechanism this is not like double-sided or anything doesn't do anything fancy like that so not sure what's going on there but there's a lot of cog work in that as always you'll get inside these because i've torn down laser printers before and photocopiers and they're all you know like hideously complex actually there's another design touch get through to the screw on the other side when you're designing 3D stuff like this, you have to think about those sort of things. Highway to the danger zone. Hey, there we go. There we go. She's out. There you go. That's rather uh, rather complex, isn't it? No, nah, no, nah, it's all it's all kamigatsa. Sorry, I'm probably not going to be able to show you it all spinning. No, no, it's all kamigatsa, and it all goes up into those gears up there so this isn't a particularly complex one in terms of like paper handling but geez anyway got ourselves a uh, dipped um, heatsink driver there look at that bobby dazzler a few through hole resistors and bob's your uncle and in fact it looks like nidec uh, made the motor and the driver as well 
because that's uh, Nidec uh, brand as, as well. So they did the entire, oh, there we go, it does spin. They did the entire solution there. So they're designed, of course, you know, different gear ratios to keep the paper in uh, like various, you know, going the way they want it to go in under the right amount of uh, tension and speed and whatnot. Yeah, like what good is something like that? Like you can't, I don't know, can anyone think of use for something like that? I wouldn't even keep like a like a PCB motor like that one really you can actually see the see the coils around there actually it's one of the first sensors that we've uh, seen optical jobby which uh, goes through into the part of the paper handling stuff down in there yeah around about there oh no that's that looks like it might be a detection for the toner cartridge perhaps it seems overly complicated uh, for that, but uh. or is that part of the uh, low toner detection thing? Maybe, maybe it uses an optical from outside. Yeah, it's going to be hard to see down in there, but I think you can see it. there's sort of some optical lens down in there. So yeah, I think that's I think that's how it's doing the uh, toner detection. There you have it. There's the laser assembly. And there's our laser diode here, uh, driver, it goes through, little prism thing there, and then I've got this little flappy doodad, which um, it looks like, yeah, there it is there, well, there it is there, it's like a little shutter thing, which uh, blocks off the laser, so I guess when you pull it out, that'd be like a safety thing perhaps, when you pull it out, it doesn't, you know, um, shine in anyone's eye, but there you go. There's a spinny mirror thing, prism there, mirror here on the front, and it just bounces, it times it and bounces it off and bobs your uncle. And of course, this one looks too short to go the full width of the page. You know, none of that US letter rubbish, uh, A4 here, thank you very much. So it actually pops out through here, goes through another mirror, goes through another lens there, and then goes to another mirror here, which then that is the width of your A4 page there. No workers. Hi, there I am. So yeah, that's that's pretty cool, huh? How it actually folds over like that and, you know, it keeps it relatively uh, compact because if you try and spread the beam just in one go like that, you can, you know, you get sort of like non-linearities and that you can't easily correct for and you get pro, I can imagine that you would get no optics expert, and I can imagine your errors would increase as you go out and stuff like that. So just in terms of uh, the you know, you know the timing and the um, scanning across the uh, page, so your DPI might like decrease. Uh, you know, well, the accuracy of your DPI might decrease as you get towards the edges. So they they have this uh, multiple stage thing like that, presumably just to uh, make it a bit more even, Stevens, um, when it scans across the page. Neat, huh? There you have it, bunch of uh, boards and stuff like that. Not really anything that interesting in there that you'd really um, salvage out of that. So, yeah, this is a bit of a loser. And the rest of it, well, yeah, um, yeah, nah. Um, I wouldn't bother <laughs> getting one of these old laser printers and uh, scrapping it for parts. You don't get too much in here. I mean, I, jeez, you got... You know, one stepper driving the whole thing. And the power supply, I'm not sure you'd um, even bother uh, keeping that. Although, you know, you might be able to salvage a few. You know, you might toss it in your uh, power supply junk bin, I guess, to, uh, you know, salvage some uh, protection uh, components. Or, you know, you might need a common mode choke or something like that. But you're not going to reuse any of the caps or anything. You might need an optocoupler one day, maybe, for something. But, yeah, you know... Generally, um, we don't really have much of value in this thing at all, unfortunately, so it's about all she wrote. It's a bit of a bummer, but, you know, it's a dumpster. Anyway, there you go, tear down of a, a dumpster fax. Leave your best fax stories down below, and uh, my entire business was based on a fax machine. When I was a boy, does anyone still use them for anything? There's got to be some niche areas where... They're still being used by some sort of law or requirement or something like that, but basically, nah, go on the way of the dodo. Anyway, if you liked the video, please give it a big thumbs up. As always, discuss down below. Catch you next time. Hello.